Hi friends, Stacy here. Megan and I wanted to let you know that we've been reflecting on this episode and have thoughts about what we've shared and how our views on cleaning are related to our childhood trauma, white supremacy, and what it means to fit in the world. If you're curious and want to go there with us too, we're going to be sharing a follow-up episode in our supporting membership. The intro you're about to hear will tell you how to join us in the supporting membership, and we hope that you will. I remember buying the sink scrub and thinking, this is so stupid. Why am I buying something specifically to clean the sink? But I absolutely love it. It gets out like, you know, when you get those weird, like greasy spots in your sink that you can't really get out, grime, it just, you sprinkle a little bit on, you wipe it down. It might be not much more than baking soda, (laughs) but it smells like citrus and it works like a dream. And I really, really like it. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You? A podcast about feeding kids. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Today we are going to talk about cleaning products, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> but you know the deal. Before we do, we want to encourage community love, starting with an ask. If you loved it and I just need you, please share us with someone in your community who you think will love us too. Because sharing is caring. Aww. <laughs> And if you'd like to join a new community with other people who already love us, and more importantly, who are excited about exchanging kitchen tips, recipes, ideas that make being the family cook a little easier, you should join our community. There's a totally free message board, or if you have the means and are moved to help support us in publishing six free episodes a month, you can join our supporting membership. If you do, there are major perks, including two additional bonus episodes a month, a quarterly live happy hour with us, and a mega giveaway each time. You can learn about both sections of our community at didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. Okay. Easy breezy. With our house cl- keeping all cleaned up, but um, um, great pun. <laughs> Let's get uh, started today. You see what I did there, right? I saw what you did. We got it cleaned up. Okay, let's start with this. Megan, are you like super into cleaning? Like, how would you describe your cleaning style? We all know by now that Brian is Mr. Clean Floors and loves to vacuum. And sweep and mop. He loves all of those things. (laughs) so adorable i don't know why probably because my husband doesn't really care so much and so and i'm a little bit of a what people call a clean freak but also that it's specific to floors just delights me yeah it's kind of interesting too because there can be like a layer of dust over everything else there can be rings in the toilet and (laughs) He does not seem to notice those things, but he does notice if the floors are like dirty, dusty, sandy. I I don't, I don't get it, but also I've just learned to live with it. And I think there's like also a distinction between picking up, cleaning and organizing. I was going to talk about that too. Yes. So can we start with cleaning for you? I want to know what kind of cleaner you are. Um... Okay, I would not describe myself as a clean freak, but recently, like as we're starting to be in other people's houses again, I'm feeling like maybe actually I am. (laughs) You know what you just said? You know what you just said? That was like weird code for I'm judging other people's homes. No, it's actually the a little bit the opposite. Oh wow. You're judging how clean your home is? Like that's a, no, that I'm judging my own feelings about the cleanliness of my house is what I'm doing. Like, okay, so talk to us we, about that. we recently had a neighbor like come over after school with their kids and it was like a week where Brian had been gone. And typically we do like daily cleanups and like, even at the end of the week, we'll do like a more serious cleanup so that the house is tidy for the weekend so we can uh-huh. all enjoy the house. Yeah. And it was like a Friday where I really hadn't gotten to any of that, but I was like, whatever, I'm still going to invite these friends yeah. over because that's not the most important thing. But I did find myself like apologizing, being like, oh, sorry, like the house is not really cleaned up. And I feel like that's kind of a waste of time. And also like 
it is a weird op, like a weird way to judge yourself and and also judge other people and not for nothing like we go over to other people's houses and their houses are messier than ours and i never think to, like you obs- i observe it but like i'm never going to say anything and i also it doesn't take away from my enjoyment of like eating and socializing with those people so i just have recently been sort of like introspective about our routines and our cleanliness and like our am i spending too much time worrying about that stuff mm, or maybe i don't need to so yeah i like to be a routine cleaner i i like the like the i think it's gretchen rubin sort of idiom of like outer order equals inner calm but i love more than actually like i clean i don't love it it doesn't always sometimes it's like a nice way to move energy out like if i'm feeling stressed and i do a little cleanup i feel better um but i like organizing more interesting yes you, now you said you are a clean freak and not to put you on the spot but you do also pay for help cleaning the house which i do i want to talk about here if that's yeah cool. do you not yeah. Do you not? We don't yet. We used to when we lived in Marietta and our kids were really little. And then in Boise, it just like never made financial sense. And also for the size of our house. And I think we're like going to be in the market for having someone come and clean at least tw- like do deeper cleaning so at least twice a month. Yeah. But I think that there's still weirdly in 2022, like a stigma around like, especially for people who identify as like the stay at home parent or the primary parent or like the homemaker, uh, which I think is bullshit. Like if you need help cleaning yeah. your house, I don't feel that. okay. So help. I have there's so much I want to talk about here. Okay, I, go. I can't relate to like almost anything you said. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Because normally we're so no, on the that's same why page. we're good partners. Okay, so I'm not a. I'm definitely aware of there being a stigma, but I don't in my like larger community. I think it's pretty common in New York for people to have a home cleaner. Obviously, there's an entire population of people who live in New York who don't and can't afford it. Yes. Massive population of people. But in general, I do think that people with a certain budget where in another place they might not allot some of that budget towards home cleaning will in New York City. Not always, but I think it has to do with, and not like weekly cleanings. But I think it has to do with tight, small spaces and a very, very busy, probably completely overworked population of people. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like it's it's hard when you live in a smaller apartment for some people to have a space that is like to keep up with the space and to keep it like clean and uncluttered. And that can be like, it's hard if you don't have a big house. I mean, I even learned this recently going to the country house. I realized that because that kitchen is so much bigger than any kitchen I've ever had, because I live in New York City, so much of my cleaning habits are tethered to the kind of space that I live in being someone who lives in New York City. Because same word. So we haven't spent that much time in that house, but we did spend like a full two weeks there over break and there was still construction being done in like Mm -hmm. one whole bathroom and like it was dusty and I clean my kitchen floors in Brooklyn every single night. Clean like you sweep and mop. I don't mop, but I sweep. And then I literally, (laughs) the floors are black. So everything shows I get down on my hands and knees and I wipe down. Like I don't mop but I wiped Why down the kitchen. Why would you be floor. embarrassed to share that? Well, because it's that's really intense. But also you have to remember that the amount of floor that I'm cleaning is very, very small. Yeah. <laughs> like I, it's not I, hard to clean on yeah. my hands and knees. I kind of want like uh, to describe it because I've been in your kitchen. It's like not quite a galley because it's not a pass through, yeah. but it is about the size of a galley kitchen. I think it's it like dead a little wider, to, but yeah. Yeah. So it like dead ends into your pantry yes. and refrigerator built ins. You have counters on either side. Like honestly, Mike slash the boys, I never tried it, but like you yeah. could reach your hands from either counter to either counter, right? Like, Probably kind of? like wingspan. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like Mike is 6'4". 
Yes. And I would say probably he can't actually touch, but yes, like I totally, like as yeah. you're remembering it, the fact that you would think that totally makes sense. Yeah. Right. Like it's not that, right. it's not that, it's not like this wide span in between exactly. the counters. The you of your kitchen is yes. maybe seven small. by seven. Yeah. Totally. It's small. So then when I had this space that was open, oh, also like, don't leave all over my counters like it's <laughs> like there's a little bit of counter space yeah i like i it annoys me that i even have a toaster on the counter like because i w it takes up the footprint even though it is small is big relative to my actual total counter space 100 percent. so when we were in this bigger kitchen i was like oh my gosh i can relax and there was crap on the counters the whole time because we were unpacking and unpacking with me is a nightmare in Brooklyn because I'm like, like, let's do this. Like right now, like everything has to go away because I can't think with all the clutter piled on top. Outer order, inner calm. That's yes. that thing. Yes. 100%. So anyway, I do think that there's personality. I mean, aside from like budget and access, like that's overarching, right? Right. But just in terms of how you think of your space, whether or not you're having someone help you, there's like personality. And then there's also the nature of the space, how easy it is to keep clean and organized and how big it is. Yeah. I feel like smaller for me, a smaller space needs to be orderly in order for me to feel calm. So, okay. That was the one thing that like, there's just not like in my community, in my extended community, much of like a stigma with having someone help you clean your home, like anywhere from, you know, once a week to once a month. Okay. Another way that we're different is that I don't really judge myself for being a clean freak. I like it. And I would not say that I judge other people because I agree with you that like, I hardly notice Except if a home is really messy, notably messy or notably dirty, I notice and I'm uncomfortable. Okay. And I like that's, I don't, that's not about the people. I'm not judging the people. I'm not like, oh my God, these people are gross. And really, I've only, like, I can really only think of one instance in like the last 15 years where I went into a home where I was uncomfortable. And the people were lovely people who I trusted to have my kids. I was happy for my kids to go to their house. I wasn't like, I didn't care. My kids spent time there. But when I went there, I was uncomfortable. Yeah. And I did not like being in the space. Yes. It was like overwhelming for me. That is a like, <laughs> so that that's the like weird introspective judgment I'm doing of myself. I don't, I like having a clean house. Having a clean house is a priority to me and I'm comfortable with that. But sometimes when I go over to other people's houses and it's not not even necessarily about like cleanliness because that's like whatever to each their own and like you said like I may notice it but it doesn't keep me from yeah. having a good time or anything like that but like people whose houses are like cluttered I do find myself being like how can they live like a similar life to me and like they can be relaxed in this space yeah <laughs> and I totally cannot be and I'm like I how cannot. like is there something wrong with me that I can't relax when there's like mess around me? Yeah. I don't know if there might be something wrong with me too, but I don't worry. <laughs> I just get the heck out. I just get the heck out. I'm like, get me out. I need to go back to my calm house. Yes. I don't. I, but yes, I, I hear you. I don't think you should spend time worrying about whether there's something wrong with you or not. I think you should Listen, just live in your all comfort. All the conversations I have <laughs> in my brain comfort. where I'm like, <laughs> It's okay. It's not okay. It's not now, me. Am I? Yes. Have you been to a home with a dirty kitchen or bathroom? Yes, but I'm also specifically thinking of like times where I've gone to visit my friends when they've had new babies and they're like that and sometimes been like, um, can I clean? Like, let me clean. Let me, instead of holding the baby, because I don't really care about babies. <laughs> Uh, which there's a whole episode about that, <laughs> like our favorite stages and ages within the private listeners community. If you want to hear more about how I don't really enjoy babies, I, but like I'll clean your bathroom. 
if you have a new baby and like your bathroom needs cleaning, it's a no judgment thing. I do not give a shit. Like you deserve to have a clean bathroom while you're nursing and up all night. Anyways, uh, I definitely am guilty of like I house sat for friends. This was pre kids and their kitchen was a disaster. And so I like top to bottom cleaned their whole kitchen, including like defrosting their freezer while I was house sitting. Oh gosh, that is hilarious. I, my mom is someone who like, I struggle with going into her space. Hi mom. She knows this. <laughs> I never feel like it's organized, especially like specifically kitchens. Like it make, I'm like, this makes zero sense. Like, why are your knives just like all shoved in a drawer? And like, why is all your baking stuff not like together. all together. Yeah. Totally. So I can think of multiple times where I've like gone to visit her or stayed with her and like done a whole kitchen. Like let's get everything where Organized. it needs to be so that you can cook in your kitchen. Have you, have you ever done anything like that? No. Cause I'd rather clean my own. I'm like, like I'm that person who with the two, I'm like, Oh, that little tiny crevice behind the radiator in the bathroom. Like I'll notice it one day and I'll be like, I want to clean that. Like, and I'll get a toothbrush and I'll go back there and I'll clean it. Like the, I'd rather put the energy into like my own home. And also I think this informs not wanting to clean other people's homes is that I've never been super grossed out by anything at a friend's house. Yeah. Like I think that there's an emotional like piece of it to me too, that if it's like you're dirty and I love you, like I don't mind it as much yeah. you know what i mean like the clutter is just hard for me sometimes when it's overwhelming but i've never been to someone's house where the kitchen or bathroom i have been to airbnbs though where i've definitely left them cleaner than when i arrived Same. or if i go to an airbnb and it's like dirty or the fridge isn't exactly clean like spotless i'm grossed out yeah. I don't get grossed out by like my friends' homes for some reason. Yeah. And like even gross things. Like I've gotten to friends' homes where like, and I'm sure people have come to my house with this too. When you have a bathroom that is exclusively used by boys only, like teenage boys, like it's probably gross. And I don't know. It's I'm like, definitely gross. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, those are my friends' kids. Like I'll just be, <laughs> I'll just squat and not sit on the toilet the whole time like, the whole way but I'm not like grossed out right uh, there's something I really love here which is like how you talk about like how you feel about cleaning and how you feel about the cleanliness of other people and your lens is like I love you and I'm not going to try to change anything for you or about you <laughs> and I'm like I love you and <laughs> we have to work on this together <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I'm the worst clean freak. No. Is that what we're like that is that what we're uncovering? No, we're this not. It's just we're, therapy I don't session. know. We're, it's like a weird therapy session. It's weird. You know, my mom, I'll tell you, it's really also I'm intense about my house. Like yes. when I'm at my mom's house, okay. My mom and her husband insist on hand washing everything like everything. Okay. Like a big dinner and they're hand washing every plate. They're do getting they have older. a dishwasher? They a hundred percent do. Okay. <laughs> it's bizarre. It's a weird choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. I I think they know how to use the dishwasher. I don't know. I don't understand it. But like also they're getting older and like sometimes the hand wash thing, I'm like this isn't like fully clean. Like, why don't you just put this in the dishwasher? But when I'm at their house, again, I notice it like maybe every once in a while, if it's like really greasy, but like, they're not, it's not that bad. They're yeah. thorough and careful, but I'll rewash every once in a while. But I'm like, whatever it is, it is again. Like, I love you guys. Fine. This is your home. But when my mom comes to my home, she tries to help me clean up like, oh, you cooked dinner. Let me clean up. I'm like, nope, hard hard no <laughs> uh i 1000 percent agree even like well-meaning <laughs> friends that come yeah. over to eat yeah. i'm like oh brian will do brian will handle yeah. the dishwasher like the dishwasher <laughs> is empty mostly because like there's stuff that i we like hand wash exclusively because it's not dishwasher safe and like no lie both of us are like this is how this is the way the dishwasher <laughs> gets loaded 
But this, <laughs> this leads me to another controversy that I need to talk about with you. <laughs> this was a couple of months ago. We always have this debate in our house because Brian is the resident dish doer. Yes. He, when he hand washes, it's just like running water, soap on the sponge, scrubbing everything, rinsing everything and putting it on the drying rack. Whereas I prefer to have like a basin of hot soapy water, washing things, scrubbing with the sponge, rinsing in the other side of the sink because we do have two basins, but whatever, uh, and then putting on the drying rack. I like posed this question on Instagram stories recently, like, uh, like clearly there's only one right way <laughs> to why and wash the dishes. Phyllis, I was absolutely shocked and appalled that everyone sides with Brian, like everyone who responded sides with Brian. They are ha like hand washers yeah. with the water running. And we Me get too. in, Brian and I get into fights because I'll like leave like a half full soapy water sink for like after dinner. Like I'll have washed lunch yeah. boxes in the afternoon. He's like, this is disgusting. <laughs> I'm with Brian. <laughs> there were a handful of people who were like, well, I like the like washing wand, the soapy wands, yeah. or they got like more specific. Oh, the soapy wand does not work for me, but it's I not, feel like it's I don't get it. I can't either, control but... the soap in a way that Enough. I want to yes. control the mm -hmm. soap. I know exactly what you're talking about. But also a fight in my house is Mike thinks that I use absolutely insane amount of dish soap he's like what is happening there like you do not need that much dish soap and also like to clean my sink at night i have a sink cleaner that we're going to talk about but sometimes i'll like zigzag like real quick the dish soap and like get my sink scrub my sink sponge and and he's like what are you doing He's like, really? He thinks I use too much toilet paper and he thinks I use too much dish soap. He oh like has God. actually been like, I'm going to track how much money we spend on those two products for you to understand <laughs> your major overuse. Okay. On the toilet paper, Brian is Mike. <laughs> and on the dish soap, I'm Mike. Because that's this is my primary complaint about how Brian washes the dishes. Some pans... I swear I'll put them on the stovetop, like get them heating yeah. to cook something in. And I'm like, this is Mrs. Meyers basil scented. <laughs> like there is too much soap being used if I can smell it <laughs> after it's been washed and dried. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel Brian. Oh, um, okay. Listen, is this a good place for us to take a quick break to hear from this week's sponsors? And it then is. when we come back, let's talk about specific products and routines. And routines. Great. Yes. yes. Let's do that. Megan, a lot has changed since my boys started solids, but one thing hasn't. Parents are always looking for delicious options that deliver the most nutrition as affordably as possible. We all want what's best for our kids. Which is why we're so thrilled to share Amara Organic Foods. Their baby foods deliver all of the taste, textures, and nutrients of fresh purees with the convenience of an on-the-go powder. Yes, powder. Amara is a small company making big changes in the baby food space. When founder Jessica realized that by removing the water content from fresh foods, she could retain all of their nutrients and flavor without having to boil them to death, she partnered with an infant nutritionist to turn these super powders into a less processed, more affordable baby food option. You just add water, breast milk, or formula to your Amara baby food powder, mix, and serve. This allows you to customize the texture of your baby's meal, which is ready in seconds. All of this and Amara is 100% organic, non-GMO, and plant-based without any added preservatives or sugars. In fact, Amara has 50% less natural sugar than leading brands and still costs less than $2 a meal. It's no wonder that Amara was voted best baby food by the bump, good housekeeping, and what to expect. Learn more at amaraorganicfoods.com backslash D-I-J-F-Y and get 25% off their online shop using our exclusive code FEEDU25. That's feed you 25 for 25 percent off any purchase at a m a r a organicfoods.com slash d i j f y short or didn't I just feed you? Okay, 
Megan, I want to talk about routines first because you mentioned that you're a routine cleaner. And I think that is the one place where we really do have overlap. So yeah. tell me what you mean by that. And then. Okay. It's sort of like there's daily tasks yeah. that keep the house clean, like keeping on top of dishes, mm -hmm. making beds. I do a load of laundry every day, Monday through Friday, because I do not want to do all of my laundry on the weekend like daily or every other day sweeping of the whole house specifically the kitchen gets swept every night because it yeah, does need totally. need it and like wiping down the kitchen every night and then there are weekly tasks like mopping the floors cleaning the bathrooms changing sheets um and then things that like don't happen every week but happen uh, with enough of a regular cadence like dusting and in our house we have like all these huge the, the newer house we have like these really tall ceilings and they get cobwebby and so mm -hmm. there has to be like a monthly task of taking one of my favorite tools which we'll mention a, like the d giant dusting wand yeah, totally and cleaning that and like one of the reasons that we're talking about hiring someone to come in and do like twice a month bigger cleans is things like the baseboards and making yes, sure like not totally. the bathroom mirrors, but the other mirrors and like artwork and stuff get cleaned is kind of falling off. Like we just don't really have the time right now yeah. and we'd like to. And then things like cleaning the dog beds or like washing all the couch blank, like snuggly couch blankets and pillow yeah. covers. That stuff happens on like a once a month basis, like whenever we can get to it. You sound so thing. organized. It's not, it's not, it's like, I, like you were saying about the little dust behind the heater, like when I see it is when I try to do yeah, it. And so totally. then it kind okay. of just gets done regularly. I'd love to be like a list person, but I tried that once when I was pregnant with Emmett and I wasn't working full time. I tried to have like a cleaning schedule and it just felt, it was like too much pressure. And then I was like, I would freak out when stuff didn't get done. And so as long as I kind of like have this running list and we just do things as we notice them. Yeah, totally. And the great thing, even though Brian is like really good about the floors and he's really good, he'll do like a pickup at any time he's home, like a daily pickup, which is really nice because it like cuts down on clutter, but he's not good at organizing projects or like seeing those bigger cleaning projects that need to be done. But if you tell him like, hey, I notice all the nose prints on the windows. Can you do like a window clean? He'll totally do it. So he's like very helpful in yeah, the cleaning of like the it. house. That's amazing. Yeah. I would not call, I would not describe Mike as helpful around cleaning stuff. Tell yeah. us about your routine and also how having help fits into that. Too. Yeah. So I'm pretty much the only person who cleans. Well, the boys do their own laundry and the boys are responsible for like picking up their rooms. Although that really doesn't mean much now that they're older because there yeah. aren't like tons of toys it's mostly oliver oliver is the kind of kid who's like constantly like he's bread from trail like you can tell where he's been yes. all day by tracing his crap that he's left around isaac not so much mike is really good at doing like really random things like organizing the wires or like making sure we have enough batteries of every single kind and then getting a battery organizer and having that and like that's in the tech closet. He's also really good. Something that I think is cleaning adjacent, but since we're talking about organizing, he does a lot of the like digital cleanup oh, yeah. and organizing, right? So like all of our like photos, media that we consume, like television maintenance, computer maintenance, like checking devices every so often, making sure everything's updated, making sure that we know when we're supposed to update our stuff, setting up charging stations, that kind of thing. He's really, really great at. And like that part of my life would most certainly be a disaster if it was left up to me. In fact, it is like my own laptop every six months, like he'll look over my shoulder and he's like, okay, I have anxiety looking at your laptop and how you're <laughs> running things. I just like, when is a good time for you to not have your computer so I can just do a little like zhuzh and clean up? Bless him. I love that. Does yes. he want to do mine? <laughs> he probably would. <laughs> probably, yeah. But he's not, like he does the dishes. If I tell him, like if he gets into a routine, he'll do it. Also, because of his ADHD, 
he really needs structure and routine. So like any vitamins or pills he takes, like have to literally be on the counter, like of our bathroom instead of behind the medicine cabinet. Yeah. Because if they're behind the medicine cabinet, he'll forget on some days, you know, when he wakes up feeling foggy or frazzled. Yeah. No. So he needs a lot of like reminders and things out and about. And there'll be like a piece of paper that's sitting on the kitchen counter for two weeks. And I'll finally be like, what is this? Like, I, I can't, like, I, I feel murderous every time I see this piece of paper now. <laughs> what is and he's like, oh, it's out there because I have to remember to do this. And I'm like, well, it's been out here for two weeks and you haven't remembered. So maybe this isn't the thing that's going to yeah. help you remember. But that's how his brain works. That is also Brian. That is 100% oh, like an ADHD. Yeah, right? Yes. It's mm -hmm. super intense. So I have regular things that we do every day. Like everybody's responsible for making their own bed. You know, I cook as I go when I clean. Mike does the dishes. I sweep and wipe down the kitchen floor every single night. The boys do their own laundry. Mike and I, like we do laundry once a week, but it's a totally random either when I have time and I think of it or it's overflowing. I fold my and Mike's laundry. The boys fold their own laundry. And then someone, Susan, comes in once a week and does like mopping, vacuuming, like a once over. Yeah. And then she and I will kind of split uh, like seasonal deep cleans. Susan comes on Mondays also. She does. Right? I don't know Monday. why I think that's really interesting. Like I like how we do oh, a Friday yes, house clean yes, so yes. we can enjoy the house over the weekend and then yes. it can be kind of dirtier through the week. But you're opposite. Like you like to have it yeah, clean for the week. Yeah. That is interesting. So I have gotten used to it. I planned around Susan's availability, not the other oh, way okay. around. But I, and I have had different days like when she's had to flex, but I like Mondays because I feel like when it gets cleaned on Friday, I, first of all, I have this weird psychological thing where on Mondays, the house is at its peak cleanliness and I get annoyed if it gets dirty anytime before <laughs> Tuesday morning. Yes. I'm like, just give me one day. I just want there, one day. There are many memes <laughs> about this one day. on the internet where it's like, if she, if the kitchen is cleaned and she has lit the candle, do not touch yeah, anything. anything. Yes. Just one day. So if I were to clean the house, if I were to have Susan clean the house from us on Friday, I feel like the kids would just ruin my peace. Yeah. You know, since I work from home, I feel like I get this whole day, glorious day where everything is just like, I walk around and I'm like, ah, it's so clean. But I also like, I wipe down the boys' bathroom like pretty much every other day. You have because you their bathroom is also the bathroom. If someone oh, else comes right. over, they use it. Yes. Right. It's like the, we have two bathrooms in the house. One is mine and Mike, and it's in our, it's in our bedroom. So people are welcome to use it, but you wouldn't walk up three flights to use it. So I do tend to wipe down their bathroom. That's like right. one of the more quote unquote deeper weekly things that I actually do more frequently. And yeah, the cleanup. I mean, just like at the end of every day, like Isaac's supposed to fluff the pillows and put the blanket away because he's the last one in the living room and he absolutely never does. So every morning I wake up and I like annoyed fluff the pillows <laughs> and put the blanket away. But yeah, I think order is a huge piece of it as a yeah. work from home person too. Yeah. And, and even not like there's even if you work outside the home, there is something nice about coming home to a space that feels calm. I think that's like the where I judge other people. I'm like, don't you just want like to come home just and feel home? relaxed? <laughs> but they do. They do. They do without. Like, Why I can't I relax? <laughs> okay. I want to, before we go into our product. Is there anything that you feel shy about admitting about your like cleanliness, your habits or your routines? I don't, there probably should be some things, but there's not. Oh, one thing I always, I think is kind of like interesting and maybe you can speak to this is pe when people come to stay, they're always like, oh, can I strip the bed for you? Yeah. 
like get that laundry going and it always decline. And in our new house, we have like a full guest bedroom and then we have two sets of bunk beds for when like all my nieces and nephews mm-hmm. come to stay. So there's four, five guest beds total. Nice. That's awesome. And I always say no because my kids and like their friends, like they'll come over and play and they'll like play in the bunk beds and have snacks in the bunk beds or like even when we just had one guest bed, they would like, we would sometimes do like, like they would watch movies down there. So I feel like it's like, I would rather yes put fresh sheets on right, right when before. I know someone yes. is coming. I love it. Versus <laughs> like, yes, put fresh ones on. And then they, I don't know what state they're in. Like, I'm not going to just let you sleep in them. I don't know. There could 100%. be kid germs or like popcorn in there. It's hard to ever know. Um, that being said, I'm much better about like changing the kids sheets every week. And like, and part of it is right now, Brian and I like upgraded to a different be- a size bed. So we don't have as many sheets to swap out, but like, I'm kind of bad about our sheets. Like me too. That's the one thing I was embarrassed to admit. Why? I it's sheets. Just- I, well, he's a teenage boy once a week a hundred percent i'm like gotta clean kids this are, bed <laughs> kids are gross kids are gross oliver i would say i do his like once a week or once every other week because oliver doesn't sleep with the top sheet mm. and that like i don't know it seems to make a difference to me okay like, like it he, makes he less dirty? i don't know i don't know like that's all right i like that story he doesn't like yourself. yeah <laughs> he doesn't like wet his bed he's old enough yeah, and yeah. like there's just the bottom sheet and then the comforter and the duvet cover. But he's also getting to an age where I'll probably be more religious about that soon. Yeah, you might want to incorporate that. Top <laughs> sheet. You're not watching the <laughs> duvet all the time. Oh my God. But our mm-hmm. sheets, I can be bad about. Yeah. And it's extra gross because I let the dog on our bed. Oh, that's the thing we should talk about. Because people feel strongly about, like, do you let your animals up on the couch now, or on the bed? And if you me, knew me, you would think that I don't. But I absolutely same. am a sucker and let this dog. It's gross. I'm telling you. It's actually gross. Like, I actively judge myself for yes. it. Like, how gross it is. Or, like, well, I'll don't. go to make the bed and there's, like, a floof of dog yes. hair on the top comforter. And I'm like, oh, this is gross. Still yeah. doing it. Or grit, literally. Yeah. Because he just came in from like outside and his favorite thing to do is to come jump on my bed, like dig, pretend he's digging a hole and go in circle, 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 circle until he like flops down and naps. Like all the grit from the sidewalk in his paws are like at the foot of my bed now on the duvet cover. We specifically have like like a top, like a thinner quilt that yes. is at the end totally. of our bed on everyone's beds because of the dogs. Yeah. Because they get up there and they rest. And I'm like, well, at least we're not like staining and I'm having to do like a lot of treat stain treatment on like the white comforters. Yeah. White comforters. Or light colored bold comforters. Moves. It's a bold move. Slot. I'm into it. Okay. We should talk about this. I'm into it because you can just bleach the out of them. Yeah. That's interesting. We like mine is a pattern, so things kind of disappear. Yes. Uh, Isaac has a light color duvet, but he doesn't like the dog on his bed. So there's he's, that. He's like not into it and he keeps his door closed a lot. And then Oliver actually has a cream colored one and the dog is up there. But you know what the grossest thing is? That Oliver has one of those really big um, bean bags, a love sack. Yeah. That's like fur, like cream colored fur. So it doesn't show a lot of dirt, but that is Ziggy's happy place. Like it's actually dented in the shape of a curled up dog because he sleeps in there so much. And I like didn't wash it at one point for like three and a half months. And I went to sit in there and I was like, <gasps> dog smell. I was like, oh my gosh, it's just not part of my routine. So I hadn't thought of it. So like I had yeah. to uncover it and do the whole thing. But listen, when those things happen, you never forget. Yes, yeah, true. That's completely You're like, true. Cool. Also, that's one of those weird things I always work because we do like we have two dogs and Miles, our older dog, is like he's stink like his breath is stinky, even oh, though he gets bathed regularly. He's just kind of a stinky old dog. And I'm always like, Am I no like does our house smell okay or am I just nose blind to it? <laughs> 
we love them so much it won't even matter it how only i only think about it when other people are coming over how frequently do you bathe the dogs oh like once a month yeah that's like we do like ziggy my sister-in-law washes her dogs like her dog like once a week i thought i was gonna be that way but i heard it's not that good for them no. i think you're supposed to do like at most every two weeks i would love to but ziggy doesn't like it so i feel like we're torturing him so ziggy and i yeah. have compromised at once every three weeks <laughs> But it's still like, especially for a city dog. Although I don't know, when he's in the country, he gets real nasty too. Listen, it's just nasty. It's just dogs like are just nasty. Dogs are gross. Dogs are gross. Love okay. them. Yes. Love them, but they're gross. So let's talk about how we clean up after them. I'm excited for this. I feel like it has the opportunity to be like a lightning round. Yeah. Yeah. Right. For of sure. Just like favorite cleaning products. Do you want to kick us off? Yeah. So some of these are just, I feel like obvious and I'll be really quick, but I actually okay. really love them. So let's start off with the perfect stereotype. If anyone's ever seen my big fat Greek wedding, it will maybe come as no surprise that I love Windex. <laughs> um, <laughs> I really do. That movie is full of ridiculous stereotypes, but let me tell you, many, many, many of them have a kernel of truth in them. <laughs> Windex is in every Greek home and I love it. <laughs> so I really do always have Windex. And I used to, listen, we're, I'm sure this is going to come up a lot, like natural products versus the chemical-y ones. I had tried to transition to having natural wipes. Actually, talking about wipes i just want to say one more thing about windex i love having windex wipes around Ooh, I too i don't even think i knew that was a thing oh those are that's my favorite so of course okay. i have a bottle of windex but windex wipes because i hate like mirrors that have like streaks on them it's like a weird ocd thing like don't come into my house it stresses me out <laughs> Today, like just this morning, I had to Windex the boys' bathroom because I was like, what happened here? Yeah. So Windex wipes are really convenient. I used to have other kind of like all-purpose cleaning wipes. And before COVID, oh my God, I forgot what it was called. Isn't that weird? I was like, it's, before, what's this thing? That it's like a weird trauma years? block. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So before COVID, I had been trying to transition and trying all different brands of more natural ones like eucalyptus and this and that. I'm back on my Clorox wipe. Bull as you would say yes always have clorox wipes at this point i didn't for a long time when they were sold out but like now like it okay mr clean magic eraser i have so much to say about this it I is like one it might love... be my number one favorite cleaning product absolutely <laughs> Specifically, I really like you can get the sheets now. Oh, I've never like, seen the sheets. O M G. Stacey. All right, so they're I'm going to link to the eraser. You're going to link to the sheets. I'll link to the sheets. Okay, yeah, they're just so great for like you know when you get the sponge started. If you don't have like a mega cleaning project to do with it, it feels sometimes can feel yes. wasteful. Well, I the save them, like, but it's weird. Yeah. Yes. The no, it's not weird to save them, but like it's hard. So for me, it's like hard to keep track of like, was this a bathroom? Mm, I mm -hmm. mean, they're not hard to keep track, but like it does have there's that like distinction, right? Um, so the sheets are really great because they're like a w nice one use product, yeah, or, or you can like cut them in half and just use part of it to like stain treat yes. the stovetop or whatever you might need to. Yes, I need the sheets. Okay, love that. Nelly's Wow Stick Stain Remover is another one of my absolute favorites. Like it's up there with the magic eraser. Okay. So I originally found this on Thrive, but it's also available on Amazon. It's just, I'm kind of interested in this brand, Nelly's. They have a lot of laundry stuff. Yeah. Um, I've only tried the wow stick and it has gotten out some really gnarly stains. It's just like a little waxy stick you wet the area you wet the stick a little bit you like whatever like yeah. color it on and then it doesn't have to sit or anything then just throw it in the wash and okay. it has um, worked i want to try it we do shout stain remover yeah. but i don't ever feel like i'm not that impressed with it it's just like that's what i grew up with so that's what i use yeah i yeah. used to use shout i've transitioned to nelly's and i really really okay. like it 
Molly's Suds Sink Scrub. Molly's Suds is another brand. And then I'm kind of curious to, like, they have a lot of different cleaning products, especially for the kitchen. I think some laundry too. But I remember buying the sink scrub and thinking, this is so stupid. Why am I buying something specifically to clean the sink? But I absolutely love it. It gets out, like, you know, when you get those weird, like, greasy spots in your sink that you can't really get out, grime, it just, you sprinkle a little bit on, you wipe it down. It might be not much more than baking soda. <laughs> but it smells like citrus and it works like a dream. And I really, really like it. Swedish dishcloths. I really love majorly helped me reduce my paper towel use. And I have mentioned this before, I think probably in our uh, Earth Day episodes, it's always my goal every single year to reduce my paper towel usage. And Swedish dishcloths are definitely the thing that I've helped most. And you can like throw them in the wash and reuse them for a while. Yes. My um, product for that is I love Dot and Army makes the oh. not ju not paper towels, which are like little fab like little fabric pieces. They have like some scrubability, like uh -huh. they're they have a texture to them, and they're great in the dish. Oh. Like they can go in the wash. Awesome. Okay, a lot of people talk about vinegar, vinegar and dish soap, vinegar and baking soda. I have to say, and I think you have a lot to say about this as well. I don't think that particularly works great, but I do like to have a bottle of when I like remember to laundress scented vinegar on hand because every once in a while I really do use, especially like for little pet things on the carpet, I'll use vinegar and it um, just smells better than regular white vinegar, which I also have and I use, but I like the idea of scented vinegar because I feel like a lot of cleaning is about all of your senses. It's not just how something looks, it's about how it smells too. And in some cases, how it feels to the touch like countertops. So I don't know, it feels like a little indulgence, but I like it. Speaking, I wanna talk about pet smells because one of my favorite products is that like nature's miracle spray. We use that on like rugs and the dog beds and stuff like when they're stinky and to get stains out. So that's one of my favorite products. And our past guest, Taryn, who you know is a cleaning and organizing expert, she's done a ton of research and like we'll link to some stories about this that like, if you combine vinegar and baking soda or vinegar and dish soap, you basically mute out their individual powers. So it is much better to do like the scented vinegar. I think we have a recipe on didn'tijustfeedyou.com for making your own cleaning vinegar, which is essentially just like adding some citrus peel to some vinegar, and then you can use it for cleaning and deodorizing. I've never tried the laundress products. But you know my secret, like, shame crush, John Mayer. He has a whole line with them. And so I always kind oh, of really? want to splurge and buy That's it. hilarious. You should do it. It smells like the mountains it. of Montana. <laughs> <laughs> it's for good sweet dreams, baby. Sweet yes, dreams. Yes, yes, Okay. <laughs> okay. Just one more thing on pet stains and vinegar. So recently... Ziggy threw up bright yellow bile mm. on a white rug. Ugh. I mean, it was like Frenchie's, French's mustard yellow. Ugh, okay. The rug is treated because when you buy a white rug, but it's like a hand knotted wool rug. Yeah. And I could tell immediately that it was like soaking up the color. And I really didn't know what to do. So I just like blotted it. And then I grabbed something from under my sink that Susan had created for uh, like, she put it in a bottle for us that says just like carpet cleaner. And I know it's like a vinegar based vinegar baking soda based situation. And I just sprayed a little on and blotted it mostly to get the like mucus up. <laughs> <sighs> so, Welcome to our food podcast. We're talking I know, about it's so gross. No, it's okay. But, but anyway, no, absolutely not. And I knew it wouldn't. I was just trying to like stop the bleeding, so to speak. Yeah. But it was came very clear that I was going to need to have the carpet cleaned. And I called several places and got several quotes because it was way more expensive than I expected. I was like, maybe I should just have Stanley Steamer come in and do it. But I'll have that be a last resort. And like all three places that I had come in to give me like a free consultation were like, 
No with the vinegar because bile is acid based and you just yeah. put another acid on it. So you basically like made it more powerful. So like terrible and made me so upset. And everyone was like, basically, like, if you look underneath, it went through. And also wool rugs in particular, especially if it's gone through and you clean it through, they can be really stinky and dry in funky ways if they're not yeah. like in a controlled environment. So long story short, after having three free estimates, I did end up having to send a huge area of rug out for like a four inch little bile. And I think I made it worse with vinegar. Yeah. I have to tell you, I've had disastrous rug experiences with dogs and like trying to clean them and then they don't get dried out enough. And so then they smell and then yeah. it's like a waste anyway. So. so did you land on something that works? No. Yeah. I mean, we're just always kind of risking it. It's why I like the nature's miracle because I okay. feel like it neutralizes it, but that does it doesn't always help with every single stain on okay. light surfaces. So it's more like where you can't see it. And just like what you said, trying to get it up as quickly as possible. Totally. Did any That's of the true. carpet cleaners have recommendations of what you should do in the future instead no. of vinegar? Send it to send the carpet to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. You bet. So that wasn't helpful. Um, let me power through just a couple of things and then okay. let's hear more from you because you have a lot of ideas too. Microfiber cleaning cloths. I love, love, love. Just have a nice big stack of them, throw them in the wash like once a week. And then, okay, I have two things that come from friends of mine because I put the word out and I asked. I have a friend who swears by Bona floor cleaner. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. I think so. B O N A. Yeah. Yeah. So there's hardwood floor cleaner and hard surface floor cleaner for like, you know, ceramic tiles and whatnot she swears by it. So I just wanted to give that an honorable mention. And then one of my friends started texting me a whole long thing about her steamer. I have a <sighs> steamer for clothes, okay. but she was <laughs> texting me like, and I'm going to put links in the show notes, like a steamer steamer. I want she, it. she showed me her one. model. I'm going to link to that. I also feel like for someone who lives in a smaller space like mine, hers, even though she lives in New York City, she's hardcore. She was like, you know, this is the one I have, but they, the same company makes a handheld version. But she was like, I use this for everything, including oven cleaning every few months. And then yes. she sent a link to how you can use the steamer. It has like, you know, a million different attachments. And you can steam the inside of the oven. You can steam in all those crevices. She said that she's even steamed her mattress before. This is what I want. Like, I want a steamer for all the things. In fact, I think Apartment Therapy maybe, like, reviewed one in real their reels recently. And they showed, like, cleaning the bathroom tile, which our primary bathroom has, like, a, a fully tiled shower insert. And it is, like, such a pain in the to clean and usually i use like powdered tide and a yeah. sponge yeah. to like because it's like abrasive it's the only thing that like gets it really clean but i would love to just steam the shit out of it yes so i'm gonna buy this and maybe we'll get some reels content for didn't i just feed you out of it we'll like i'll steam clean my um oven yeah stove top and microwave I won't subject you guys to being in my dirty shower or <laughs> see my dirty mattress. But what we learned from this episode is it's probably not very dirty, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's just you talking to yourself. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. What other products? Okay. Just like, I'll just do a couple because, like, could this get boring? I love, love, love the lodge pan scraper and yes. you can buy like a set of three of them i keep well, obviously we keep one at the sink for like cleaning cast iron and like stuff that gets stuck in the corners of lunch boxes but they're also really great for like deep cleaning if you have like scuzzy tiles or like the kids get slime and stuff you can use it to scrape it off the fabric or whatever the slime got into so huge fan of those also, I will link to it. It's from Home Depot, but I love our extendable duster because it yes. goes up to like 12 feet to get in the... Yeah, you have high ceilings. The high ceilings and we have like all these beams and stuff and it's just like super satisfying to use it. In the same vein, I love... 
And I know it's like not very environmentally friendly, but you can reuse the things. I'm sure I could get reusable uh, covers for it, but Swiffer makes an extended duster and we have like three ceiling fans in the main living room. And it's just so great for like making sure that the, the we get the dust off the top of the blades. Mm, nice. The other thing that I'll mention and we can link to as well is like, I love a cleaning caddy. Oh, I know yes. That's totally. So weird. That's like the, the apex of like cleaning and organizing. And so every bathroom has a little cleaning caddy with products underneath it. So I don't have to like go back and forth with cleaning stuff. That's smart. Cause I have one big one that we keep in the laundry area. Yeah. Which is like, that's how I did it for a long time. Now that we have like the basement. I mean, you have three stories, so all the more reason for you to have like just a small little cleaning kit in you and Mike's bathroom and then one in the boys' bathroom. I just got mostly tired of like carrying the little like toilet brush scrubber. Yes. Around and being like, am I dripping on the floors yes. while I'm trying to clean? Like, am I making it worse? Also, that's probably some weird germ phobia. <laughs> so just shout out to caddies and then i'll just say overall like i really love the products from seventh generation for like a full circle moment when i before i was in culinary school i worked at this little cafe that was like in an office building there were offices around it and seventh generation was one of the companies that was like close by so i got to meet like their founder and that's that's what we used in the cafe and so even though now they've been bought by a larger corporation, I still just like have a sweet spot for their products. And I feel like they're really um, effective, which is the most important part about cleaning products. I will tell you though, I did, I mean, and this is a thousand years ago, I used their natural diapers for a while when Isaac was born. They were like brown. Oh yeah. That natural brown. (laughs) And this is Isaac's 15. So this is like- Like a long time ago. They are calling it seventh generation. That's the brand name, but these were like first generation yeah. diapers and i was like after a few weeks i was like this is not this is not where it's at <laughs> there was there were stiff poop was flying out the sides i was like where are the pampers <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so glad you mentioned diapers though because i like was addicted to baby wipes when our kids were little like for cleaning <laughs> stuff it's like you and the, the windex wipes yeah uh but now i love and i actually keep them in my food styling kit because they're super great for like cleaning things and not leaving streaks um water wipes oh yeah and like we keep them in the car literally just wipes that are wet with water uh, probably there's something else in them and i should know since i use them so readily to like wipe down my kids yeah in my home but they're one of they're supposed to be like no you know nothing additional added clean and gentle and I like them. And you like them. That's all that matters. You know who else has lots of things that they like? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are yeah. some episodes where I feel like we share things that you might only know from years of culinary professional experience like us. But this is an episode where everyone has something to contribute and has something that they love. And we want to know about all of them. So I can't wait to get into our community to get cleaning product recommendations from our listeners. If you want in on the same, join us for free at didn'tijustfeedyou.com backslash community. And don't forget, you can get all those recommendations and more, including those bonus episodes we publish twice a month by joining our supporting membership. You can also keep in touch with us on Instagram where we are at didn't I just feed you and we might do a review of the steamer or by signing up for our newsletter. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to didn't I just feed you wherever you get your podcasts or if you're already a subscriber, take a minute and leave us a rating and a review. Yeah. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. You're I'm Megan. Megan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Stacey. <laughs> Stay sane and well fed until next week. Be sure to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you're listening. And don't forget to rate and review.